Mozart, I thought you would have picked something a little more familiar, Jean Jerome. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I want to say hello to everybody. Welcome to everybody who's tuning in for this Friday, September 25th. It's the last Friday of September. I'm telling you, time is flying by, and so are we. So anyway, today is Ancestral Eyes, episode 23. We have a special guest. We have a 33rd degree Freemason, Xavier Martinez. Welcome, Xavier, to Ancestral Eyes. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Jen Jerome. Thank you for having me. Okay. I'm looking forward to this. And Jean Jerome. Welcome, my co-host. How are you? Uh, hello. Good, good, Teresa. Bruno Boya to everybody tuning in. Very, very happy. It's going to be an exciting, very interesting show. Uh, I've known Javier for many years now, and I've had the honor to be uh, a, a guest uh, to talk about IFA topics on his mm -hmm. show Misterios Ocultos with uh, Mayra Berenice. And nice. uh, we've spoken many times in the past, and I knew he was a uh, a, a, a Mason, uh, 33rd degree Freemason. And uh, I was very honored to invite him and have him with us tonight. It's going to be a great show. Definitely, definitely. You know, it's funny. Everybody knows a Freemason, but does anybody really ask a Freemason any questions? No, but we will tonight. I'm looking forward to this. I've been wanting to ask a Freemason these questions for a very long time. I've got 10 of them lined up. <laughs> so anyway, but um, Jean Jerome, is yes. there anything else that you wanted to read up from uh, from the introduction, yep. or have you taken yeah, care I, of? Yeah, I, I, I will read uh, the bio. So perfect, uh, thank you. Yeah, and and for everybody tuning in tonight, we have the privilege. We'll be doing the show in, again bilingual, Spanish and English, mm -hmm. primarily leading with English, but we'll be periodically translating into Spanish, and we'll start with a bio. So. Javier is a musical director, marketing and administration studies uh, company at Rio Hondo College in Los Angeles, California. He's originally from Zamora, Michoacan, with residence in La Habra Heights, California. He's been in the entertainment industry. He's the founder of Intermex Music Publishing, career manager for artists like Juan Sebastián, Los Freddy's, Los Muecas, Tiranos del Norte, Grupo Indio, Jenny Rivera, and other artists. Founder of the Promotores Unidos USA Society. He was nominated three times for the Grammy Awards for Best Producer in Regional Mexican Category. Founder of Mausan Productions USA in partnership with Mr. Jaime Mausan, 2001 to present, creating content for companies like History Channel, Univision, YouTube, and Netflix. Uh, he's also the founder... Uh, yes, he's also the founder of the show Misterios Ocultos with Mayra Berenice. A shout out to Mayra if she's uh, catching the show uh, from 2015 to the present that airs uh, from Los Angeles, California to 15 cities in the United States of America. And I'll read this in Spanish. Perfect. Javier Martinez, uh, director musical estudios de mercadotecnia y administración de empresas en Rio Hondo College de los, los de Los Ángeles, California. Oji, originario de Zamora, Michoacán, con residencia en Labra Heights, California. Él ha sido muy activo en la industria de entretenimiento. Es fundador de Intermex Music Publishing, uh, manager de carreras de artistas como Juan Sebastián. 
Los Freddy's, Los Muecas, Tiranos del Norte, Grupo Indio, Jenny Rivera y otros artistas más. Él es fundador de la Sociedad de Promotores Unidos USA, nominado tres veces a los premios Grammy como mejor productor en la categoría regional mexicana. También es fundador de Mausan Productions USA, USA en sociedad con el señor Jaime Mausan desde el 2001 hasta el presente, creando contenido para empresas como History Channel, Univision, YouTube y Netflix. También es fundador del programa de radio Misterios Ocultos con Mayra Bedenice desde el 2015 hasta el presente, que se transmite desde Los, los Ángeles, California, a 15 ciudades en los Estados Unidos de América. Muy bien, la gran bienvenida a nuestro amigo y hermano Javier Martínez. Thank you, Jen. You're on. Thank you, Teresa. We're, we are honored to have you on board for sure and to uh, have you on our show. So I'm going to begin because, like I said, I've got 10 questions. <laughs> so the, my first, my first question to you is going to be like we ask all our, our guests, is when did your spiritual journey start? What was that pivotal event in your life that prompted you to your spiritual path? Well, um, I like, uh, in my life, I, I like to read. I was an avid mm -hmm. reader. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in my uh, junior uh, school, junior years of school, uh, one of the uh, class that I, it, I, I get amused, it was uh, a history of, uh, of the war, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. the history of the war, and cosmography, cosmography. Yes. So at that time, I didn't know what I want to use, what use going to be for me, for myself, uh, that kind of, uh, of studies. Okay, mm -hmm, and at mm -hmm. very early, early ages. Uh, later on, when I start, I keep reading books and I, my, mm -hmm. my, my, going to my life, to my, uh, uh, I come from Mexico to the US. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before to get into a spiritual, you get into live uh, uh, your life in this uh, material world. So mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. to fill your necessities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when, yeah. when you are that, Absolutely. I mean, uh, as time start going past by, uh, mm -hmm. you, you start to mature yourself. That's and right. All depends on uh, who you, you are friends with, who is your friends, what kind of environment is, is, is around you. Absolutely. And... and, and uh, Going back to the uh, to the question, I think uh, my my first path to enlightenment, I want to see that, mm -hmm. that, that that way, it was in my I was about 40, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sixty, so about 20, 20 years ago, and uh, okay. I come from a Catholic uh, family, right. I'm a Catholic, raised in a Catholic family. So um, I believe in God. I'm, I'm, I'm a Catholic. And, mm -hmm. uh, but like I say, my, my, my first needs were, were to first to, to make a career, to live in this world, um, mm -hmm. one more time in like this material world. But my, I, I can say that in that age started my, my first. Uh, steps into the enlightening uh, path that we're still on it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We always are. We are never, never ending when it comes to our spiritual path, for sure. Right. Well, thank you, Xavier. I, too, was raised Catholic, and um, it was sort of my stepping stone into my spiritual path as well, so I totally understand. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. Now, is masonry... I know it's not your own, but being Catholic is not your only spiritual path, but masonry is also a spiritual path. And 
Can you sort of tell us, first of all, I'm just going to, you know, ask you if you could tell us what is masonry? Just give us a definition and how that, you know, relates to you. Yeah. Uh, Freemasonry uh, is a, is a, a, a way of life. It's a fraternity. Okay. okay. Freemasonry is, is, is a school. Mm -hmm. It's a school of uh, philosophical school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where they made uh, uh, leaders. He's a mm -hmm. fraternity of men bound together by oaths. Right. And we have Masonic laws, legends, and customs, uh, charge the rules. So, we mm basically -hmm. teach lessons of social and moral virtues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we manage ourselves with based on symbols of the tools and the language of the ancient uh, builders uh, using a uh, structure of symbols and to, to, to do the character of men. Mm -hmm. And we are, as, as Masons, we mm -hmm. are obligated to practice, to practice brotherly love, mutual assistance, mm -hmm equality, mm -hmm. secrecy, and trust between each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, how, what's, uh, that's what uh, Freemason is. Mm -hmm. that's what and Freemason. and that, that's what appealed to you, obviously, um, you know, going through your life, coming to that stage in your life, you felt, um, a need to to express that and to to share um besides just being you know following your catholic belief system you mm -hmm. wanted to to get into freemasonry to share to get into the philosophy and and expand that that spiritual side of you in a in a scientific way would you say uh not necessarily let me tell you why okay okay uh, when I was 25 years old, I was 24, 25 years old, one of my co-workers, he, he, made me, he approached to me and he asked mm -hmm. me if I was a Freemason. And I said, no, no, that I want, I, I, that was the first time that I hear the, uh, the, the, that word Freemason. Mm -hmm. And he said, no. really? And I said, no, I'm, I'm not a Freemason. And he says, how strange, because you behave like a Freemason. From Interesting. caring for others, and a leader, and with a character. So, that, and he asked me, he invited me to, to enroll in, in, in a Freemason. Oh, wow. At that moment okay. in my life, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Why? Because I was 25 years old, uh, I have about two years that I was uh, nearly married, starting mm -hmm. a, a family, and starting yeah. a family business. So I took a lot of your time. Yes, I was. I mean, I just come from myself from Mexico to the to the U.S. I have nobody here. So to start a, a business, start a family. Mm -hmm. And I get into college. So, I mean, to educate myself. So mm -hmm. it was too much going on. And my goals were, I mean, I was thinking about okay. buying a house. And then, I mean, it, it was a lot of things happening. I mean, I was working the sure. 24 hours. I would used to work 36 hours. Wow. So, but I was more into building myself in, 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 in feeling a dream for my family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in that time, I don't have a, a, the time for, for to be a mason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was keeping reading and reading and reading. And I mean, I have, I mean, I read a lot of books. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I stopped reading for some years because mm -hmm. in my career as a music producer, I, I used to right. manage the, 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 uh, 
the careers from professional uh, artists. And right. it's, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, I used to work seven days a week. Wow. And, 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 and because- You had other commitments, for sure. Yes, during the week I was, uh, say, I mean, I was selling the 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 the, the, the names of the the the, uh, the concerts. Okay, mm -hmm. in the weekend I have to go to the to the venues with the artists to the performances, and to get the money okay. and pay pay them all, all, and then come back Monday the, the same thing, and then oh, and then I went to college, so so it was wow. some kind of you were uh, busy. Oh yeah, yeah. Very busy. You had no time. I mean, your family, your commitment to to building your career, and you, you know, no, commendable. Yeah. I can see why that gentleman, why that uh, friend of yours came up to you and and yeah. said those things. You know, that'll lead to my other questions for sure. So, um, mm -hmm. keeping in line with the questions, um, so. Could you tell us about the origins and the foundations of masonry? When did it start? Um, is there a spiritual and a practical side? Because I know there's a definitely a practical side, the builders and the, and um, those that build the the you know actual buildings, the 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 foundations of our society and other societies and cultures. So could you tell us a little bit about that, the foundations and the origins? Uh, yes, there are, let me see, I do my, my notes here. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm glad I was able to send you the questions ahead of time yeah, to prepare for have. all of this. Yeah, yeah. Maybe no. I do my homework. Which we, oh, good for you. Good for you. No, and that's oh, what well. we do with all our guests. So the research, <laughs> the, yeah. And uh, okay, the, the beginning at uh, the Freemasonry, uh, as we know, Freemasonry. Uh, right. In the beginning, they were uh, film before the 1700s. Uh -huh. The Freemasons, we use the the terms of operative, operative. So it was constructors. No. They were the builders for the cathedrals, right, and, right, and temples like that. Okay, they right. were masons. Okay, they were con they were they were Freemasons. Right. They were masons. Okay, they so. The, the, so the the the, for instance, in the two types of Freemasonry operative and nowadays we are speculative well when i'm going to do that later but first okay. at the, the beginning uh -huh. uh, freemasonry it believes to to come to go over the thousand years and mm -hmm. then they believe uh, the uh, solomon temple the, the the temple of king solomon was right for, for so now we we take that as as, as a, the first temple of a Freemason, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in the new history, uh, the Freemasons, the Masons were the ones who, like I said, who built the uh, the cathedrals, the temples, mm -hmm. right, so, right, and and they have this kind of uh, communicate themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, they were travelers. They used to to, to build a, a a temple, a cathedral, and then move to the next town to build another one. They were journeymen. So, yes, travelers. Mm -hmm. And they were they were free. And then uh, they come. They have to come up with kind some kind of reconciliation between them. And right. When they go to us for 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 work, they have the they don't have a resume, but they have the the, the signs and they have a some kind of handshake, and with that, that handshake, they know if they were apprentice, or it was a, a, a craft, or it was a master mason, or it was in a higher position, with okay. that handshake. Okay. So we take it from that. And then, in the in the the first uh, Grand Lodge 
that we know it was found 1717. Okay. And it was the grand launch of London and Westminster. Later, mm. later called the grand launch of England. Okay. Right. It was found on St. John's Day, the 24th of June, 1717. Uh -huh. This happened when four existing London launch meet for joined a dinner. So after that, so many uh, lodges were uh, uh, expanded to join in a regular, regular body. Mm -hmm. So from there, they, they come uh, to know, to be known as the moderns. Like I say, it was the speculative work. Okay, so the, okay. So the, the Masons make this transition from operative, the okay. builder of Catrina, right. or to a speculative. And now we, we start to build ourselves, to work in ourselves. Okay, so in other words, the, the actual, um, the operatives, they were the ones who actually physically built they were the journeymen the travelers yes. and the speculative these are the ones that evolved to um philosophy am i correct in believing that because the, before yeah be, because uh, philosophy in in freemasonry it doesn't come uh -huh. in the first degree in the first grades in the first degrees it comes later on okay. because first you have to work in yourself it's like a like a like a regular. I mean, like a like, a like you have to work on your spiritual self. Before that, before to be a doctor or an engineer, let's put it this way. Let's make an analogy, okay? Okay. Before yeah, that, yeah. you have to go to kindergarten, then elementary, then middle school, then high school, and they say, "Hey, what happened with the specialty? Hold on, you have to go to college and then to." Master degree. Right, right, so right. For us in Freemasonry, spiritual, it comes like a master degree. Ah, okay. Is that no, it's no way. Before to be a doctor, you have to go to college. Before to go to college, you have to have to, to high school. Oh. And on and on okay. and on. So, okay. So that's, that's how it is. Right. Because when you uh, when you get initiated as a mason, you're not a mason, you're an apprentice. Right. You have to work yourself from there to the fellow craft. Right. So it's another uh, uh, ceremony to give you that degree. Right, right. And then after that, it comes Master Mason. And okay. until any degree, you are a Mason, not before that. You're an apprentice of Freemason. You're a fellow craft of a, a Mason. And then you're a master. But now you can call yourself a Mason. Okay. So so basically, when you first get initiated, you just got your foot in the door. That's of it. Course. Yes. <laughs> right, you right. Can. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Okay, all right. I'm getting the picture now. I'm getting the picture. Yes. I love that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move to my next question, which is, so, okay, so given that, where where are the different schools of Masonic temples worldwide? Because we know that there are. But the one in specific, before, give us, before giving us an example, mm -hmm. um, we know about the Scottish Rite and its 33rd degree system. And how does that fit in with you? Because you are a 33rd degree Mason in the Scottish Rite. Yes. You chose this, but you chose to, to, to do this in Spanish as opposed to English. And I know you told me during our interview 
there's a difference between the two. So could you give us a little bit of insight into that? Uh, let me tell you first of, uh, of the degrees. The okay? Yes, of please. The, Let's start there. Are you right? Uh, the first grade is apprentice, entered apprentice, like I say. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the new member of the lodge. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the second degree is fellow craft. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, and the third degree is the master mason. If I go mm -hmm. for, you know, because I have all the, the names of the degrees of mm -hmm. one to 33 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there you are. There is the. Is that for okay. the. The Scottish right on the right. And the Scottish right on the right. And the arc in the left. Or is or is the art, or is the right right of York, right of York? Yeah, left is the yeah, and then right Scottish right. Sky is right, and and, and the other is uh, is York, yeah. The York, right? Okay, that's right. Okay, yeah. So so mm -hmm. let me. Sorry. So okay. So we have the Scottish right, and then we have the York, um, yes. right of of, yes. of Freemasonry. Now, okay. is that worldwide? Does that follow suit worldwide? The Scottish Rite and the York Rite, no matter where you are in the world, it's the same yeah. thing, right? This, yeah. I mean, okay. We have uh, the French Rite. We have uh, the re uh, the the anti the uh, is that the uh, rectificate rectificado Scottish Rite. And then we have the right of uh, Memphis and Misraim. They have 90, 99 degrees. And then mm -hmm, we have mm -hmm. the Nacional Mexicano. And they are, uh, listen, all of them we have a, a God. We have, we, we, we call him the great architect of the universe. Okay? Right, 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 being. right. Let's say that, the supreme being. Okay. Right. So, uh, like somebody says, we don't have a great architect of the universe for the Scottish Rite, for the Mizraim, for the York. Is the same. Right. But the uh, how we 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 uh, uh, how we uh, how we do how we execute the rite or the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Right, it's almost eighty percent of the same, like a baptism, like a Christian, like a Catholic. I mean, mm -hmm. eighty percent of the ceremony is the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So, so they're that, similar and they're the same. They're okay. Yes. So we are brothers because we have what 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 we have in common because we have the the laws, the law. That is the, right. the, the same for, for, for all the Masons. The brotherly love, the respect for each other. Yes. When I, and that's that's what the oath is taken, is, yeah. is to honor that oath and that brotherly love. Yes. And let me tell you something very interesting here. That all our, our tokens, our signs, and the, the, the grip are the same. So that's the way we... Right, recognize each other. Recognize each other worldwide. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. In language, the the gripes they are the the, the right. same. Uh -huh. Right. Because right. Remember, I got it. We come from the the builders. Right. So they recognize each other for the signs and the grips, the, the way they they uh, they have that. The grip. The, the uh -huh. handshakes. The grips, the okay. handshake. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, and so 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 now, um, you what it what you speak Spanish as yes. opposed to English in the in the Scottish right, and what's what's the difference? Are you going to let out any secrets if you tell me? Because um, when no, we were talking no. private. It's the same. No, no, it's the same. It's the same. No? It's the same. Oh, okay. Okay. But okay. 
mean, I choose. I choose to 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 practice the right. Sp- right. in the Spanish lodge in the Spanish lodge. Mm-hmm. Why? Because uh, some of my brothers from Latin America come to, to the U.S. and they don't have the language. Right. They right. don't have the language. Right. So that's why no. I, I prefer to keep my uh, my pra- practicing uh, the the in the in my mother language, maternal language. Right. Which is Spanish. Makes sense. Makes yeah, total sense to me. And sometimes, I mean, there is something, Teresa, that we cannot argue about it. We before right. okay. before I, that I am a, a Mason, I'm a human being. Okay. Right. And absolutely, I don't know how to say it, how to to take it, but what is humans? Sometimes we corrupt things because in our okay. path, right. in our path to enlightenment, right. we we do mistakes, uh-huh. and right. sometimes we are fighting with our ego, and that ego is the I mean, the the one that we have to to fight. Let me tell you something very interesting. Sorry, um, what's that bell, Jean Jerome? It's not here. It's probably a message. It's probably uh, uh, he's receiving messages. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yes. It's, it's not it's me. My, my computer. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was just wondering. I thought. Yeah, am I missing something? No, I'm not ringing the bell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was a Masonic thing. I was going to say every what? time you say a certain word, does the bell ring? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, so that's why I What's decide. That? I decide to 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 uh, keep practicing uh, the uh, the brotherhood in 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 Spanish. We are a big community in, in the in the U.S. of uh, who speak uh, uh, Spanish, and that we practice uh, our Freemasonry in in Spanish. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Why not? I mean, you know. They all okay. are the same. Okay. Well, that's good to know then. And of course, why why would you speak in any other language if it makes it easier to communicate and to be able to, you know, practice the things you do and, and do what you do in Freemasonry? It makes total sense to me. And so as, as far as I know, in my, uh, my experience, that I, that, I, that, I, that I get working with some brothers of uh, of the Anglo uh, Brotherhood. I don't know why, but it's more spirituality in Latin Latin brothers than the Anglo brothers. I don't know why, but I I, I found out. I mean, I I don't want to say that they don't. That there is no no there is, but most of them they are social. Then the brother for social life for, for socializing yes and not to, right. to to put our tools to work in ourselves. Right, right. Okay. So, okay, that makes sense. It's, it's, okay, so I'm going to move along, and I'm going to um now I'm going to ask um in in our past history in our human evolution. Throughout history, we've had historical figures that were Freemasons. And they obviously influenced history. And why do you think that is so? Are there basic tenets or beliefs that would, let's say, influence these, uh, you know, historical figures? Could you name some historical figures and could you sort of tell us how you could see that they would be so influential in our society and our cultures. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to that, like you say to, to, to some of them, some of the mm-hmm. uh, remarkable uh, Freemason. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Paul Rivera, and mm-hmm. John uh, Hancock from uh, from the U.S. In the U.S., we have 15 presidents. That we have 
be, they are being in the in the, in the brotherhood mm -hmm. uh, purify Supreme Court justice 17 wow. United States senators 32 United States military leaders and 13 signers of the American Constitution and uh, in every country most of them uh, they, there is mm -hmm. uh, famous uh, masons mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I was reading that um, the, 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 the legend of uh, the Freemasonry, it comes, mm -hmm. uh, our temple is the King Solomon's temple. It's uh, an, right. based on that belief. And right. King Solomon, uh, he called this uh, great architect from uh, Persia that it was Irama Biv. Oh. Okay. Yes. To, the, to do the construction of the temple, Irama Beef is our guy. Is one of uh, 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 I don't want to say the leader, but it's a, a very uh, important role, very important uh, mm -hmm. figure in Freemasonry mm -hmm. because in the three degree, he was the first. He, would you say he's the first Mason? He's the he's a he's the master of masons. The first one. Yes, he got killed when uh, when the apprentices want to take away his uh, the pastor's word, and he say to them, "You have to earn it." So that legend is right. very right. very strong in each Freemason. Right. Okay. So, so I, I'm, I'm, I mean, nowadays, uh, I can speak a little bit about that, but because mm -hmm. I mean, that's important. That's right. important. Right. And and uh, I, uh, I cannot go into details, but uh, where is that's where we mm -hmm. came from. And mm -hmm. in our, altar, our altars, we we work with the uh, volume, uh, sacred volume, which is the Bible. Okay. 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 And and uh, in large, in open large, in the temple, uh, when we close the doors, we cannot talk about any religion. We cannot talk about politics. All the things that it, it divide us, we put it on the side. So in my lodge, right. there are people that is Jew, Jews, Jews. They are uh, really? Catholic. Mm -hmm. They are Christians, Islam. And if mm -hmm. one of the brothers want to put his uh, sacred love book on the altar, he can put it. The Torah, Bahaba Gavita for, for, for the for the Buddhists. So right. that's a, a form of respect. Okay. Right. Right. So so uh, so when, excuse me. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just getting into this. Yes. No, I was reading the, the message for you. So, yeah, yeah, it, I was just reading <laughs> yeah, Melvin's message. So, okay. So, with all these people, uh, in the medieval times, uh -huh. uh, people like, uh, no medieval, 1700s, 1800s, with uh, Newton, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. people like, uh, uh, yeah, Isaac Newton, and people that mm -hmm. they were science people. In those years, they have a, an issue, not a problem, an issue with religion, with the religion, with the popes, mm -hmm. because they contain the power, mm -hmm. the kings and the popes. So right. they manipulate uh, the knowledge, the power, if you if you were against something that they say, they say that you were against God. That's right. So it was kind of a dogma. Mm -hmm. It was a mm -hmm. dogma. Mm -hmm. So people like Isaac Newton, like uh, uh, Galileo Galilei, 
all these scientifics, if they don't think like them, they go to scientific way, um, numbers, mathematical way, uh, it doesn't mean that they were against God. No. No. So they found that in common with the uh, Masons. Because when okay. they were people who would like to study and look for something else. They were so, free thinkers rather yes. than in religious dogma. They were more free thinking. Free thinking. Well, it, it was outside. Even, yeah, it wasn't even uh, free think. Well, it was it was free thinking, but the problem is is Javier is, is is explaining the Catholic Church was brutal, absolutely brutal, in in terms of quashing any theory or concept that would in any way invalidate the uh, canon law or the the historic the quasi historical accounts in the Bible. Or even the definitions of you know creation myth and, and everything. Else. So any new right. knowledge, anything that threatened that particular, they they were persecuted. They were stripped of their of their homes, mm -hmm. uh, put in jail, mm -hmm. tortured. So I, I can I can see why those free thinkers were looking for someone to have their back, essentially, right? To to mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. provide some degree of of camaraderie, brotherhood, and and also you know be able to stand up for each other, right? Right, right. Yeah, the, the way and to, so, to <laughs> sorry. So all all men of different religious beliefs could come, regardless, be respected and allowed to be who they are. Yes. Yes. So as a so, uh, within the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why people. I mean, uh, out of the normal. I mean, the leaders, they they feel that, uh, I mean, that need to start mm -hmm. getting together with people like them to think the, the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In those years, it, it, it was your life that it was uh, in, in a risk because you Absolutely. were not the same way. So not it was secretive. You, the yeah. Brotherhood would meet in secret, right? Obviously, because it was dangerous, right? In yes. in the current time. Okay. All right. So, so actually, um, before 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 you go on there, just on that point for everybody listening, would okay. would you say, Javier, in your in your historical accounts of, of the Freemasons, especially after seventeen seventeen and and the foundation the formation of the Grand Lodge of England and so forth? Would you say that the element of secrecy, that that element that you know, uh, you know, the brotherhood, the trust, uh, uh, love, but most the secrecy aspect was in fact a response to persecution or to the threat of persecution by other powers like the Catholic Church and or other kings and all that that. You know, could feel threatened mm -hmm. by people that had, mm -hmm. you know, free think, free thinking, and and had uh, revolutionary ideas and so forth. Yes, L let me tell you something. We okay. are in two, 2020, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. 2020, and as we are speaking about this, we are thinking about that long time ago. So that yes. goes right already. Is not. No, it's not, no. has it? No. Why? Number one thing. The number Politics. one. No. Our first enemy in Freemason, for Freemasonry, this is still for a thousand years until now, ignorance. Ignorance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody, okay. nobody's uh, taking you away to study Freemasonry. Nobody. Just yourself. No one's Just your. Nobody is constricting you to to go and don't say that. Don't look at that. Don't. No. But okay. we just. 
go by by he says they say you say they say and they don't go and look for the truth okay so so so, so now and in those years always knowledge is power remember mm -hmm. absolutely if you enforce it if you you don't enforce your knowledge you still nothing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to read, and you don't never read. I mean, the, the, the same thing like that. Somebody that that don't know how to read, mm -hmm. the other mm -hmm. the other is the same, mm -hmm. right? So it is definitely a, a. I'm getting the idea that it's a fraternity of those that gather to expand their knowledge. Um, to put away their differences, their ignorance, to go forward, to reach, um, could you say, um, mutual, um, I want to say respect, but more than that, it's it, it's more of a mutual understanding and coming to terms with um, how they can improve society in what's going on. Yeah. You say that? We go... Well, what I learned is that we go to the lodges to work in ourselves, to build ourselves. Okay. Okay. So we we fight against ignorance, against mm -hmm. fanatism, and against tyrannies, tyrannism, mm -hmm. tyrants. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in that, remember that it's a fraternity, and remember that it's a philosophical school to work in yourself, to dominate your passions. Okay. So everything comes from inside out. Okay. So okay. we are Freemasons, we are builders of our own castle, our own cathedral. Our own temple is inside of us. Yes. And if I, go, I if I want to go to a spiritual, first uh -huh. I have to dominate my material body. Right. My and then right. from there, I must start going to alignment. They say, right. you, are a, you are a beast from your middle to the, to the, to the bottom. And from the mirror and up, you are a spiritual. Okay. Right. All right. I got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So what I what I'd like of a Freemason and Freemason is that they give you the tools in the temple, the secrets, and then it gives you a big playground outside of the lodge to enforce that, to practice with your tools. Okay. All right. And obviously the tools are secret, right? <laughs> it's not secret, like I say. Well, oh. one thing amazing, I mean, that, that is, I, I, I mean, about this uh, uh, brotherhood, yeah. the, in the beginning, when I was, when they invited me to, 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 the, to, the, free, to the Freemason, uh -huh. uh, to the brotherhood, I said, I was kind of, uh, I, lead, I, I read a lot, I read and read and read and say, I don't need them. And I, I was, I mean, I'm sorry, uh -huh. kind of stupid <laughs> to say <laughs> that. And mm -hmm. there is things in the lodge that there is not in the books. That it goes okay. from mouth to ear. Right, right. And, and, okay. and it's, a, a, you have your oaths. Right, and if you are a man, a, a, a person of, of of your word and your oath, I mean, that's right. that's what it keeps this. I mean, this right. brotherhood. And, and that leads to my next question, which is: to be a Masonic leader and a code of conduct or ethics is a requirement. Correct, and can you tell us why? Why? Let me. I'm gonna. 
I'm gonna read you the Masonic Code of Conduct. Okay. Please do. Please do. First, worship the gra the grand architect of the universe. Love the neighbor. Be commendable mm -hmm. and respect the opinion of your fellow men. Love the righteous. Show compassion for the unfortunate. Liberate yourself of immorality and hate no one. Speak respect to, respectfully of the elderly. Sensitively to your colleagues. Sincerely to your friends and affectionately to the poor. Do not falsely praise your brother for his disloyal. If they do so unto you, be wary of corruption. Follow mm -hmm. your conscience. Guide the poor. Every dark moment you rely unto them will be a curse to you. Respect traveling brethren for their situations. Situation is renowned. Avoid disputes and insults. Place mm -hmm. in reason ahead of everything. Respect women. Do not abuse of their sincerity and favor your debt over dishonoring them. If the great architect of the universe bless you with a child, give thanks for this responsibility bestowed upon you. For their own in, you will be their model for divinity. For the first 10 years, may they be subject to you. Until 20, may they love you and until that, respect you. Teach your children good principles before tempting habits. Prefer that they produce an illustrious doctrine than show frivolous elegance. And yearn that they be honorable men rather than practical men. Benefit from what you read. Apply what you observe. Practice and reflect on Freemasonry and utilize all the benefits you and your brethren. Mm -hmm. Always be content with what you is bestowed and of that around you. And never judge the actions of men by condemning them for or forgiving them. This judgment is solely left to the great architect of the universe. So those are the kinds of wow. Well, that is quite the code of conduct. And yes. would you say that most of your Freemasonry colleagues follow this to the best ability of their of themselves and, and and hold themselves accountable? I mean, we're all human. We all, you know. We make mistakes, we falter, we fall. Um, so would you say from all those code of ethics, what do what would you think is the most important? And what would make you a Masonic leader? What is the key ones that you would say in order to, to move on and, and acquire more degrees? Teresa, your acts. Actions. 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 Okay. There is a lot of papers and a lot of codes, a lot of things, oaths, mm -hmm. actions. Actions. Oaths are own, oh, your oaths that you make are yeah. just written on paper. It's the actual actions, putting those words into actions and, yes. and, and honoring them with respect. Yes, when I was a worship or master for my lodge, that's the last thing that I say always to my brothers. Brothers, go and put into action out there what we are learning in here. Right, right, and right. And I guess like you, your question, I mean, we are humans and we learn for from everybody. The yes, thing we do. 
the, the things that, that we have to do and the things that we don't have to do. Mm-hmm. Those are good <laughs> teachers too. The people who are doing grown things, they, they say, look, yeah. don't do that. Mm-hmm. Look mm-hmm. How, is, how you look if you do that, if you take that, that path. Everybody mm-hmm. will have our, our conscience and spirit and which one, we have the, the, the black and mm-hmm. the white, the good and the bad. Which one we are feeding? That's right. Which one do we yeah. feed? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. So, okay. like once, one time I say to, to my brethren, I don't come for to, to lodge for you guys, for you brothers. I come for myself. <laughs> to work in my answer. If I come with that with my match on, mm-hmm. light mm-hmm. on, if we put together all the matches, it's gonna be a big fire. Of course. If the others don't have the the, the match fire on, hey, don't blow in mine. I have mine. <laughs> right. As so smaller it is, is my flame. My little right. flame that is mine. Right. Awesome. Okay. Wow. There's a lot more to this than than people thought, I'm sure, about Freemasonry. I, oh, I yeah. definitely believe so now, well, just it, knowing it, this. It, it brings, it bring, like, yeah. having read the uh, the Code of Ethics, um, mm-hmm. and again, you know, as, as uh, Javier says, to put it into practice, not just in the lodge, but also right. in life with your family, your community, your country, mm-hmm. and, and the yeah. world at large. Uh, it reminds me of a of a quote that uh, that mm-hmm. used to say, "Virtue without religion remains virtue, but so, religion so. without virtue is hypocrisy." Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. Okay. So then I'm just going to jump into a completely different question from there, and that is. <clears throat> What people um, don't know, and and people do want to know, about Knights Templar. And I believe that there is a relationship. It's a facet of Freemasonry, if I'm not mistaken. Um, So, Xavier, could you tell us what is the relationship between the Knights Templar and Masonry? And what is the difference between the two? And did one order come before the other? So my question, number eight, has, has two parts to it. So first of all, what is the relationship between Knights Templar and Masonry before we go into the difference between the two? Okay, let me tell you something about the, the Templars. Yes. The Templars, there is an, an order of warriors Mm-hmm. The warrior monks, and they were formed in 18, 18, 18 11, 18. 11, okay. 18. Okay. 11, 18. And uh, after the first, first crusade, mm-hmm. they were named officially the poor knights of Christ. They were what? called the what? The poor knights the poor, of Christ? The poor yeah. knights of Christ. They were monks. They were monks, okay. Yes. In those years, um, Rome, remember that Rome conquered Israel, and it was Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. In uh, in in uh, that century, the 11th 11th century, they were losing Jerusalem. So right, one because of the, uh, the so crusades, yes, the, the influence of the, they were, that's how Sarkin. the crusades start. The reason, mm-hmm. so the Pope come to 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 the kings and ask for the kings because they were not countries; they were kingdoms, right? Mm-hmm. They right. were kingdoms in those those, those years. Right. So they asked for mm-hmm. the Pope asked for the help of uh, 
the kingdoms to come and rescue Jerusalem. Right. So they say they 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 create a a bula. A bula is like a mandate. Like the, the, mm -hmm. there's a, a law, and they say the Pope that every person who wants to go and fight and die for the salvation of uh, rescue of Jerusalem mm -hmm. was a, a, a direct ticket to heaven. Okay? okay. And, and ask the, king, the kings to help with the money because there is no ma war without money. Right. Cost money. money to go to war. <laughs> if they... Uh, if they uh, help this army to get into into there, he's gonna get some uh, special treatment from from the Pope. Mm -hmm. So remember mm -hmm. that it was power. So they put money in there. They put the people who were in in jail. They go out of there. Jail. They prefer to go and fight, and maybe they make it and uh, even to to do that. So that's how uh, the, the, the crusade start. And then they came back mm -hmm. and they get the name of uh, the Knight Templars. Okay. Okay. Good years. So later on, 1300, they become a, a, an order with a lot of power. Mm -hmm. Within themselves, because, right? Yeah, because when they start this, they keep uh, uh, the, the Pope and the Kings, they keep them uh, territories, land, mm -hmm. to build the, ca no castles, ki kind of uh, fortifications to, uh, to prepare themselves to war. Mm -hmm. So, Anyways, the, 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 the Templars, they are the, the, the first who come up with a, 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 a kind of a credit cards. Mm -hmm. Why? They were the bankers. The bankers, yes. They were the bankers. They were, they were, they were a combination of the bankers and uh, Brinks, Brinks uh, uh, money transport. They were the <laughs> ones that were hold. That, that, that they were that they were they literally yeah. they, instead of an armored truck, it was armored uh -huh. knights, right? And, okay. and that was their mandate. So, in they say that, well, that's, that well, that's interesting. Yes, considering, that's why yeah. Considering the story, I'm going to interrupt. So, considering that these were so-called monks, mm -hmm. how the hell? Did they become the bankers and the that Brinks guns? Let me tell you why. For that very reason, and and Javier will tell you. But Let me tell you why. Now you yeah. wanna you wanna understand why? Let me. Yeah. And don't just remember, we don't have highways, we don't have light. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so, right. so you have to stop in the night to 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 to, to follow the, the trip the next day. That's right. Every night. Remember, right? So you got money if you go to from your hometown to the next. It was three days away. If you want to go buying to buy something, it, it was a lot of robbers on the on the on the uh, on the road. And what did they, what they do? The the uh, uh, the Templars. They have money in one town, so in the other town they have money, so they keep. Notes, so you don't uh -huh. have to pay them one thousand dollars as a note. So with, with that note, in the next, you deposit that a thousand dollars in that town, and in the next town, or in the, whatever town you want, they're gonna give you your money there with that note. Very much like a bank transfer, a wire but, transfer, a check. But, but they were charging five to ten percent. There we go. Oh my God! Uh huh. That's how they started. Okay. Holy, and, holy and, Hannah Banana. 
<laughs> okay, and when they come back from the first crusade, like they say, uh, they get this from the, 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 the Pope, the exception of taxes. Everybody pay, they pay taxes in those years, but not them. Because they were fighting in, 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 in God's name. Oh, okay, but where would they get all of this booty? Was this when they would go um, over to Jerusalem and basically, I guess, um, <laughs> rape and pillage? I mean, like, where are they getting this money from? Poor people weren't donating this to them. Where was where was this money coming from? Like, these are just monks. I'm, I'm still not understanding. Remember, remember that I told you that they asked, yourself like a monk to act like that but if you were king they ask you for money for that purpose and they ask you for so the, oh the kingdoms you're saying the kings would donate this money yeah, I, 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 the, the kings would bankroll it the kings would bankroll it in in right. in 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 uh you know to reach you know papal favors or papal land or influence and all that but the trustees, the bankers, were the Templars. And they were chosen because precisely because they were monks and they were supposed to be above the temptation to steal or to rob from each other or to misuse the funds or to breach their oaths. And they sounded like they had to be pretty strong. So it wasn't some sniveling little monk. He had to have no. some sort of substance no. to himself physically, no, 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 right? No, no, remember, the Templars... I mean, no, the Templars were, I mean, they were not monks. They call it monks. Mm -hmm. But remember, there are a lot of people from the from the prisons. They 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 set it set, set it free to go. I was gonna say you said they were formerly prisoners. So these guys were just not your little, you know, I mean, no, absolved exactly. by the Pope, you know. You know, <laughs> I can play dominoes better than you can and um, you know, and make the monks, so to speak, right? Yes, in one book that I, that I'm gonna recommend everybody to read is mm -hmm. "Born in Blood." What's Born? it called? Born in Blood. Born in Blood. Born in Blood. Yes. Born in Blood. Yeah. Yes, that's one of the most uh, uh, interesting books for Freemasonry and Templars. So the it's mm -hmm. a it's, it's a very good book. Born you know where I. You know where I see these guys, Knights Templars, evolving to, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mafia. <laughs> uh, okay, nobody's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The Knight okay. Templar, I mean, uh, as I know now, the Templars, there is no, no. Okay. They don't follow the, 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 they don't have the same impact as the Freemasons. Okay. Well, I mean, they were, they were released prisoners, right? So, of course, my mind's going to be all. But, but you, have to, you have to understand, they weren't all released prisoners. The, the actual order of the, of the Knights Templar was initially uh, a select, like these were knights. These were knights in the different realms that the, okay. the formed the nucleus of but in order to swell their ranks because they were being you know they would get ambushed they would get killed right. they would get killed in the crusades there came a point where they ran out of regular knights or, or regular and they, and they began to like everything like they started recruiting and and you know having them swear swearing them in as knights right mm -hmm. Yeah, and, right. And, so like, they, they would take prisoners and go you are now a knight and you are a monk and um, well, the, in our uh, in the Scottish right, we have uh, uh, thirty-three degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Degrees. But uh, let me. I'm gonna read it real quick. Okay. The okay. first, the first grade is enter apprentice. The second is fellow craft. The third, master mason. Fourth, sacred master. Fifth. Perfect master, sixth intimate secretary, seventh provost and judge, eighth intendant of the building, ninth elect of the nine, mm -hmm. ten master elect, eleven 
Sublime Elect. 12. Grand Master Architect. 13. Royal Ark of Enoch. 14. The, mm -hmm. We have the knights from there to the 30th degree. The 14th degree, right. they call, we call them Scottish Knight of Perfection. The 15th, we call it Knight of the Sword. 16, Prince of Jerusalem. 17, Knight of the East and West. So as you can see, we have the knights in there. 18, okay. Knight of the Rose Cruz. The Rosicrucians. Yes. We we so we get to the to the Turiet who is Elect Knight Kadosh. We can see it in the in the picture that Jerome put on the there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Turi first uh, knight aspirant or grand inspector inquisitor. Uh -huh. So there mm -hmm. is the where we have the, the Templars in there, the knights. Okay. So they really became integrated with Freemasonry. That's no, that's what I, I'm kind of no, the, yes, the, I'm getting that name, but, but it doesn't have to do nothing with the Templars. No, just, no. But, but so what's people, the difference between the two? Because people think that that uh, because it says knight, knight, caballero, knight is uh, a knight templar, right. knight of, the, of the, this, is nothing to do with that. Nothing, nothing. I'm a I'm a knight templar. We can we can speak about that in another program. But I'm a knight templar is okay. nothing to yeah. do with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing to do with now, female. okay, so. So we have the Knights Templar that that um, are part of Freemasonry, if I'm not mistaken, and then we now have Rosicrucians, but we won't go there right now, because otherwise we'll go on and on, right? But um, yeah. so what I wanted to do is, um, so basically the Freemasons came first and then the Knights Templar, right? Because they were the ones who, who basically bankrolled the the ongoing crusades and the protectors of this money yeah look in the 1400s remember that the, the night templars i'm going to speak a little bit of, of, of them the night mm -hmm. templars are 1818 okay 1818 mm -hmm. and then in uh about Thirteen in the thirteen hundreds, Philippe, the king of France, correct. He he get together with the Pope, with the Pope. That's right. And mm -hmm. this, this king was up to the neck in debt with the Templars. One hundred percent. He owed a lot of money to the Templars. So he get together with the Pope and they put an ambush to them. That's correct. For not to not to pay that debt. That's right. So uh -huh. get to Jack de Molay. That's right. Okay. The the last grand commander of the Templars. Was Molay. Mm -hmm. So so he they put into, into a trial. And they mm -hmm. put, they say that they were against God. They were, they were a spirit on the, on the cross. And they were worship a, the devil. A Baphomet. A Baphomet. A mm -hmm. So it was lies. Lies. That's right. And he said, okay. I mean, you say that God is your God and blah, blah, blah. And I will want to set you free. And he says, no. Mm -hmm. Jacques de Molay say, no. Jacques de Molay say, I'm a Templar. When I become a Templar, my oath is to serve and die for God. And right. today, I'm fulfilling my oath. Mm -hmm. Right. 
But let me tell you something. To the Pope and the King, you are taking me to a jury for yourself. That's right. But before a year, God is gonna take you care of you. God, you're gonna be and the, to, to, to you're gonna be judged for God before judge before the eyes of God. Yes, and they die before one year from that. Yep. Hmm. So that okay. day, when they kill uh, Jacques de Molay, it was a Friday the 13th, and they kill a lot of Templars. That's Friday the 13th, 13 o'clock. And this is where Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. That's, what, okay. that's where the, the idea or the concept that Friday the 13th is unlucky comes from the unjust slaughter, rounding up slaughter of the Knights Templar. Knights Templar. On a concocted right. set of charges in order to steal their money and wipe out the king and the Pope's debts. Right. So the Templars. Interesting. Interesting, they, interesting. They got too they powerful knew, and too rich. They knew about this and they they never get the money. They never get no, the money. No, because the Knights Templar hid a lot of their money all over the place. I mean, yeah, I just came one recently. Of is, one of the places is the Chapel of Roslyn mm -hmm. in England. Yes. Okay. And that 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 was built by Michael uh, St. Clair. Okay? Yes. Yes, 200 yes. years after that. And there is a lot of mis mystery in that chapel. Because there's a lot of mystery in the Knights Templar. That, that in there, they, there is the, uh, there it is the San, the, the Grial. Holy Grail. Yes. The Holy Grail. The Holy oh. Grail. Yes. Uh, I say that. Because there is a, there's a spiritual component to the Knights Templar. And as legend goes, the Knights Templar themselves, when they went to Jerusalem and when they were in battle against the Saracens, they also befriended them and learned from them and took some magic components from their belief system. And this is this is where the Knights Templar and their spiritual path had that extra little something that I think um, made them a little, um, how, how could you put it? There was a mystery to them and this is what sort of would you say the basis of future secretive societies was this religious and belief system this mystery to them was this something that freemasonry was a part of and the knights templar could you sort of expand a little bit on that would you say when when the when the army of the Templars get to Jerusalem, when they conquer Jerusalem, uh, they choose the ruins of King Solomon's temple mm -hmm. to make the, uh, head, her, their headquarters. Headquarters, the headquarters. And they say that they found something very interesting there. Okay? They yes. Thought, Escaping and and, 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 and and taking things uh, from the from the bottom, and mm -hmm. they say that some say that they found the Holy Grail in there. Others say that they, they, they found the spear that the one that this uh, Roman uh, pierced pierced Jesus' uh, side. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and the cop. Excuse me? The grail. That's the grail. The pup, that's the, the grail. Yeah. Yeah. But the spear, the, 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 the divine the spear. That's right. The, the spear. The is that... where, to and, see if Christ was dead. And, and some say that that uh, they find out the uh, 
the real uh, the things that they can show that uh, Jesus Christ have a, a meet with uh, Maria Magdalene and they have a line of descendants. That's so right. if they come up with a light to, to the light in there, the, the Christianity is going to be over. So that's right. one of the saints that they say because they have a lot of power. They say that they have, they, like we said before, Baphomet. In Baphomet, it was the, the, the head of uh, John the Baptist. So, right. the, the, some kind of a powers that they get in there. So, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the legends. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's the legends. No, there's, there's, there's a lot of mystery to the, to, to the Freemasonry and to the Knights Templar for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, books like Dan Brown's, uh, you know, yes. novel and the movies subsequently coming from that um, definitely played a lot on that mystery and uh, very fascinating stuff. Um, you know, and, 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 and also the, all the riches, the booty, that the Knights Templar um, basically went through entire Europe. And I think they made deposits of their, their, uh, their wealth and everything. I, I, I came to recently find out that even in Poland, in St. Kashmir's Cathedral, they had found some catacombs deep under the, uh, the mm -hmm. actual church. And there's some evidence of Knights Templars, uh, you know, having been there. So I'm sure there's also a whole set of, um, as you say, sigils and, um, you know, secret symbols that even the Knights Templar would use amongst themselves or with each other, you know, so people who are, are looking for treasures left behind of the yeah. Knights Templar would definitely be able to find these clues by these symbols, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, look the the chips of uh, Christo Christopher Columbus. They mm -hmm. have the, the Templaria, uh, the cross. Mm -hmm. the cross the, the, uh, the la pinta, la niña en la Santa Maria, the the the, yeah. the, the chips. He was he uh, was traveling, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. they said when he was uh, uh, the, the Templars. Uh, I mean, there is some like you say there is uh, things uh, over the, the the years that there is that mm -hmm. we, come, we have Oak, Oak Island in the in the Atlantic. They are looking for for the for the treasure of the. Of the uh, uh, Templars in there in, Ice in Iceland too, right? Yes, mm -hmm. they see that wow, a lot of pirates were mm -hmm. uh, under the temple because the Templars they, remember it was power and it was as they have the the the, the, the Knight Templars of Malta, the Knight the Templars of Malta, the Knights of Malta. Malta. Yes, yeah. so yes. Tell us Templar. about that. Mm -hmm. There is different uh, 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 lineage. Of, of Templars. Mm -hmm. and, and so what was the difference? Why why was there a split? Could you tell us about that? I, I don't have the uh, the, the right... Uh, the the I mean, whole history of that. Yes, okay. no. No, I don't have it, but I don't want to say nothing that I mean, that I'm not sure of. It. Okay, okay. But there is different right. uh, Templars. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I think I'm pretty done for my questions, other than my final one, which is um, we know there are varying degrees of initiation, and um, and why is that? I, I'm sure there's a, a, a basic answer to that. Um, you have to be properly prepared, correct? Um, oh, but yeah. Could you share something about that? Of course, yes. Uh, I, I put you well. Like I said before, when you enter to an enter apprentice, uh, mm -hmm. uh, your initiation ceremony, mm -hmm. that's a for, for, for that, okay? And then from there, it goes to, to Ibarais for, for the time 
to go to the second degree, fellow craft. And right. then the next. So so every every degree comes with a ceremony. It comes with a test also, like in school. Okay. Up to the 22nd. Up to the 22nd, you have to do a test and you have a ceremony and they give you your grip and your token and your your password and your uh mm -hmm. uh and get the word code word so in in thus the the okay. grip the password and the sacred sacred word that mm -hmm. word in person there is no book of that okay it okay. goes in person and but the 33 degree, you don't have to, to do a test. You just are it, right? <laughs> because they, no, but it, because uh, that the, the higher body, the, they, they recognize, they recognize you. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a recognition of your peers. The recognition of your, of your career. Okay. Your, your peers, by your peers. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I'm 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 done my questions. I thank you, Xavier, thank you. very much. Uh, I've learned a lot. I really have. And sorry, Jean Jerome, you didn't get a chance to translate none of that in Spanish because <laughs> no, I just wanted to uh, get yeah. you know, all my questions uh, my answered day. first of all. Yeah. So no, no anyway, so I'm going to let you take over now, Jean Jerome, and. Um, Go right ahead, okay? Since I've hogged Xavier all to myself, now I'm letting him, let him talk to you. Thank you. So, Javier, I'm going to do this in Spanish. Perfecto. Okay. Uh, 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 so, to, to segue in Spanish, and I'll translate uh, uh, accordingly. Um, okay. Javier, muchas gracias, porque nos ha dado una muy buena explicación, eh, tanto el, el espíritu o la, la cuestión de la ética, de los masones, el porqué de los masones, un poquito la trayectoria histórica, también un poco la relación con lo, la, la, los templares. Uh, una pregunta. Eh, eh, dentro de el, el Scottish Rite o la masonería hoy día, usted ha mencionado que, eh, y también cuando hablábamos por privado, que en los templos se, no se habla de la religión ni la política, se, se, se hace énfasis en, el, en la virtud, el comportamiento, la integridad y trabajar sobre la persona. Pero usted ha dicho que como símbolo del de creador, del gran arquitecto, y por respeto a las diferentes religiones representadas dentro del templo masónico, dependiendo que muchas veces hay un libro sagrado, de las diferentes religiones componentes, puede ser en la Biblia, el Corán o el Torah, en el cual se hace cierto juramento o está presente como testigo de lo que se está, de, de, lo, de los artículos, vaya, lo que se esté discutiendo dentro de la ley. Correcto. Sí. Una, una pregunta ahora, le hago, en base, usted sabe, punto de vista de IFA, Orisa, dentro de los templos hoy día, a su conocimiento, existe. Eh, al igual que la Biblia, el Torah, o esos documentos, o, o eso, esos libros sagrados, eh, símbolos de, por ejemplo, uh, de Ifa, por ejemplo, para los Yoruba, en casi toda parte de Nigeria, y hasta también la diáspora, hasta en Cuba, en la, en la, en la disciplina afrocubana, todo lo que era juramento, todo lo que era conducta, juramento, virtud, palabra, y eso se juraba con Ogun. Entonces se ponía el, un caldero, ¿tú entiendes? O una representación de Ogun, al cual la presentación de Ogun para jurar, ¿tú entiendes? Fialdad, o vaya, cualquier compromiso como hombre se hace con Ogun apenas de, sí, de, sí, de, de muerte. Claro, ¿tú claro, ¿tú? sí, sí, sí. Entonces, dentro de lo sin tradicional, eh, ningún secreto ni ningún eh, vaya, eh, elemento que no, usted no pueda divulgar. Usted a su conocimiento en alguna logia hay el símbolo de Ogun o en la orilla Ogun 
como símbolo para hacer juramento, por ejemplo, como eso? Mira, no, yo no he visto. Ok. No he visto. Okay. Ah, porque, muy buena pregunta, pero a nadie se le ha negado. O sea, si no lo veo, si no lo he visto, no quiero decir, porque no lo aceptemos. No. Ok. Cuando digo de, de, de los que con los que hemos trabajado, es porque alguien nos lo pidió. Y nosotros aceptamos ponerlo ahí, en el ara, uh -huh. en el altar. Okay. Si viene Jen Jerome y ya empieza a trabajar con nosotros uh -huh. y ve el funcionamiento de la logia, el funcionamiento uh -huh. de cómo van uh, uh, las reglas, el reglamento y viene Jen Jerome y, 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 y se, se acerca a, a nosotros y nos dice, me gustaría tener esto representativo de mi religión, ¿lo puedo tener? Entonces, nosotros haríamos una votación para ver qué, qué, qué hacer. Eso entra dentro de los usos y costumbres. Usos y costumbres, ok. Correcto. ¿Por qué? Porque somos muy diversos. Exacto. Nosotros tenemos los, los linderos de la masonería. ¿Ok? Los linderos de la masonería son las reglas, los reglamentos. Uh -huh. Y ya, ya lo que me comentas es una costumbre y un uso okay. que hacen individual. Ok. Entonces ya lo vemos y como los que estamos comentando no va contra nuestros principios. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué si tienes el libro de Raúl? ¿Por qué no puedes tener el libro de José? Si es una, es una religión que se está practicando. Eh, 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 hay una, como dice, una creencia milenaria. O sea, Exacto. que ya, ya, ya existe o sea, la representación de, de ese orisha, tanto en la parte sí. de Vodou como en la parte de orisha, es milenaria. O sea, uh -huh. es vaya, muy, muy antiguo. ¿eh? Yo no veo ningún problema para que estuviera... Y en caso de lo que no lo tengas físico, se puede hacer una representación. Y esa representación se hace. O tú la traes la representación. Se presenta y, y, y se pone. ¿Por qué? Porque recuerda, somos usos y costumbres y somos símbolos. Símbolos, exacto. Una analogía. Me recuerdo que hay, hay las, las logias itinerantes. itinerantes. Uh -huh. ¿Qué son? Logias que se formaban en guerra, en el campo de batalla. Porque había, había, este, uh, hay hermanos, están en la milita en militares, entonces se, okay. pinta el, se, 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 se figura el, 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 la logia, el templo, y se, en, el, en, la, en la tierra, en el piso, y se ponen los lugares de cada, de cada uno, muy interesante. Sí. Se hace, eso sí me, me interesa mucho. Ya, ya me picó la, la... Usted lo representa en el suelo, en, en, claro. el, en, la, en la tierra. Claro. Interesante. Claro. Exacto. E inclusive, este, nosotros, este, si no tenemos la herramienta, nosotros le llamamos herramienta a nuestro cuadro, a nuestro compás, lo dibujamos Ajá. y ahí está el símbolo la representación lo que cuenta la intención interesante correcto muy interesante so uh, we're we're at all, I'm just gonna uh, paraphrase what I asked and and have your response yes, please so I asked in his experience in in many uh, lodges uh, Freemasons especially Scottish right that he has visited Um, he had mentioned that, you know, as a presence or as a respect in terms of their custom, th to have a holy book. It could be the Torah, it could be the Quran, it could be uh, the Bible, uh, Bhagavad Gita, any, any holy book where there are members represented by that holy book and, there, and there's a free vote to do so. I asked him if uh, for both the Yoruba but also the Fomwe, Uh, Ogu and Vodungu are is the Orisha by which over which many oaths in Ifaoris are sworn on. 
and represents, you know, everything, all the, the elements of virtue that he terms of integrity, secrecy, uh, brotherhood, uh, honesty, you know, transparency, by penalty of, of, of punishment by a wound. If you break a blood oath, if you break the blood oath, it is by punishment by a wound, a punishment of accident, a punishment of death, and so forth. I asked, is there, has he seen that representation in, the, he said, no, but also uh, he doesn't know of anybody who's put it forth. What does and that mean? Not, put it meaning forth. that a member, in other words, a member, let's say, let's say, as he indicated, let's say I were invited and I was I actually a, a, a Mason, had become a Mason and had been in the lodge for some time. I could say this is a symbol, which is very important to our belief system and is a representative, you know, very ancient and is a representation of, of oath taking and, and being a, a, a sort of a, a trustee or a watcher of oaths. Uh, and then it would be put to a vote because he says it does not go against their code of ethics or con, but it, it is simply a question of custom. So that it would be put to a vote and see if, the, and either it would be allowed to be shown in material form or it would be allowed to be shown in symbolic form. And then he basically pointed out that in times of war, an impromptu uh, lodge would be formed by simply Brother Masons uh, basically marking at the absence of having their, their compass and, and square, um, they would mark them on the earth, on the ground, uh, to symbolize and to, to basically make manifest the lodge in you know harsh or you know combat or or uh, lo localities where the lodge was far away or in order to essentially conduct business or do something in a, in a state of war or in the absence of the lodge. Javier, okay. did I miss anything or did I misrepresent no. anything in my no. translation? In one of the of the most important, more, more significant, yes, uh, signs of Freemasonry is the square. And the compass. Exactly. Right? Yep. Well, and the joining of the two symbols. I can use my ring, Jerome. Mm -hmm. Yep. I yes. can use my ring as those symbols and put it to work. Right. You see? That's yes. an example. If I don't have a, 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 at my hand, at hand, the square and the compass, I can put my ring to work. With the right, mm -hmm. and that would be considered a tool, correct? Yes, it's the symbol. Remember, all it's a, it's a symbol. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So that that very very interesting. Now, uh, sort of a follow up question. Uh, now in COVID days, it's question and follow up question. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> um, lo, lo mismo que yo le pregunté sobre eh, un símbolo como eh, Ogun, como un, una, un símbolo sagrado. La pregunta es, dentro de la logia que usted sepa, que usted ha, ha, ha estado involucrado, que conozca, ¿usted ha visto pequeña, po, uh, ninguna o mucha o razonable representación de la comunidad que practica IFA como uh, Babalaos y Anifá, etc., o, o Lorisha, o, o alguna de, de esas pendientes religiosas dentro de los templos. ¿Hay, hay representación? ¿Usted ha visto que personas de estas creencias han, han adoptado la masonería también como una fraternidad? Mira, uh... Recuerda que una, no, no, no lo he visto de esa manera, porque okay. no se me dijo que fuera de Ifá, ni se me dijo que fuera de, de budismo o fuera de otro, sino que eso es lo que se ve en, en, en la masonería. Ok. Pongamos un ejemplo. Si tú me dices que Santa Bárbara es Changó, pues yo, yo vi a, a Santa Bárbara y yo no sabía que era Changó. Ajá, ajá. ¿Correcto? Ok. Lo, porque hay muchos símbolos, o sea, universal. Lo que significa para uno, 
una manzana es la manzana que se comió Adán y Eva, y otra la manzana es la de Apple, Macintosh, Ajá. o sea, no, no, es, no puedo decir eso porque no, no se me explicó, ni hemos, ni hemos pretendido eso en la masonería, Ajá. sino pretendemos ese símbolo que significa para la masonería. Correcto. Okay. Entonces, usted lo que... Ok, so, eh, eh, ahora el, el diablo está en los detalles, como dicen. Sí. Eh, entonces, una cosa es, por ejemplo, so vamos a decirlo de esta forma, para un cristiano o un católico, vamos a decir, un musulmán o un judío, eh, una de las cosas que representa su fe o su su creencia representa en ellos, en el caso de ellos, su libro, su texto sagrado. Sí. Eh, y al, al cual, como usted dijo, si, si hay representantes de esas fe dentro de la logia y hace una votación, en las personas que comparten esa creencia dirían, bueno, en este caso vamos a poner la Biblia o vamos a poner el Corán. Pero yo que, lo que quizá quería decir es, ¿Usted ha visto ese tipo de representación en el cual en una logia digan, vaya, hay una representación de la comunidad y favoriza o de religión afrodescendiente, vamos a decir, en el cual haya esa solicitud y se pida eh, o se trabaje, vaya, que se reconozca, vaya, que esas personas existen dentro de, 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 la, de la logia. O sea, una Mira, logia va a decir, tiene 80 católicos, 30 uh, personas de, de la creencia judía, uh, you know, 50 o 60 musulmán, y aunque no hablen de sus creencias, no hablen de religión o de política, pero se, se, se supone que ellos no esconden su, su creencia uh, ¿no? principal, ¿no? Mira, ahora que me estás comentando, este, yo tengo una tres hermanos que eran santeros y estaban ah. en la iglesia y nunca pidieron eso y yo no tenía coronado el santo eh estaba ah. coronado. sí y nunca pidió eso y, pero había un judío y el judío sí pidió y, y, trajo, y lo trajimos y lo, lo tenemos junto a la Biblia pero el hermano Rigo que era santero nunca pidió algo de la santería Interesante. Interesante, porque para, para nosotros, por ejemplo, para, para Ifá, eh, el símbolo de Ifá, pero Ifá utiliza para juramentos y cosas esas, muchas veces utiliza Ogu. Pero él... ¿Entiendes? Eh, lo dicho. Pero es interesante que no haya... No, no haya otros pues, dos que eran, que eran sus ahijados y nunca pidieron nada. Ajá. Interesante. Sí. Ahí está la respuesta. Interesante. Bueno, ya usted sabe. Ahí está la ¿Sí? uh, I've asked, so I, I asked a crawlery question. I said, uh, you know, are there visible representation, let's say, from the Farisha uh, community or, you know, any of the diasporic uh, Afro-descendant religions? And have they in any situation, to his knowledge, you know, requested certain like symbol like Ogun or something like that to be, and he said he cited one example that they had one visible member of, uh, you know, pra the practice regla de ocha, and um, they never asked for any symbol of Orisha or Ifa to be placed alongside the Bible, the Torah, or the yet it was never put to the floor as a vote, and he says that's actually now that you mention it, I'm very curious. You know, thing, right? A curious aspect, right? So. And so, what would be the symbol then, John Jerome? Would it be a Baba well, Lau's book? No, no, no. In that case, usually for oath taking or to show conduct, like if you're looking at the spirit of conduct, oaths and everything else are taken by on over Ogu usually, right? Now, if you're Ogboni, if you are in the Ogboni uh, group. Uh, it is done over Edan, which is representation of Onile Obodura, Mother Earth. Right? Okay. So our oaths are to Mother, to Edan, to Orisha Edan, which coincidentally descended in Ogunda Yeye, Ogunda Mei. 
So it is believed that there is a, a, a very uh, intricate link as well between Edan and Ogu, because both represent a form of justice and rectitude and you know okay. oath taking and swearing and so forth, right? So it's just that, but it's an interesting an interesting question. So uh, an interesting fact that he says it was never brought up. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Which is interesting. Th that 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 is what um, when, when I when I um, many years ago uh, now just when I had become a, a babalao maybe two years ago so maybe eight years ago uh, I'm I'm going to be my tenth anniversary of being an awu will be in November second will be ten years that I've been a babalao uh, and when I was in my second year having been initiated to Ifa I was invited to join uh, the Scottish, one of the Scottish lodges here in, in Toronto. And uh -huh. I was invited to an open house to meet with the gentleman who sponsored me, very kind, you know, to, to, to talk about, you know, what masonry was and everything. And we, we had an exchange in terms of, you know, uh, and I expressed my, one of my main interests was to, to have that ability to learn, to, both from the conduct aspect, but also to understand many of the mysteries and, and have, uh, and I asked about, you know, the books and the, the, the sacred, you know, teaching that are kept within the lodge. And at the time, um, the, I asked the, the two gentlemen that, that one of them was the primary, but there was another gentleman who also came to speak with me. And I asked, you know, if they had had exposure to Ifa and you know the belief systems of of uh, Orisha, Vodu, and and they they had said they had many you know books on different you know aspects and teachings, but that they had, to their knowledge, they were very curious and they would be welcome to know or to study or to learn about the Fa belief system, and that's one of the things that prompted me was that I saw that I, I did not see any uh, in Cuba there are. Uh, you know, masons that are, of course, Babalao and and Orisha in Cuba, but in outside of Cuba, I haven't heard it, even, and definitely not in the lodges in Canada. Uh, I've had, as I told you, many friends over the years who are masons. Uh, my great grandfather was a thirty third degree man, uh, Jean Ignace Huguet, and his son as well. And uh, from the French lodge, it was it was originally from Marseille. And uh, he went to went to Cuba, but um, like Ifa wasn't really like when I speak into man Ifa, they don't know, and that's why it prompted my my question, right? Interesting. Yeah, very very interesting. So we have a question here. I'm just going to shift to a question which was asked posed a little while before from Melvin. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Melvin, it took a while to to start asking or posing the question. Does each lodge have their own code of ethics, or is it only one code of ethics that each lodge follows? Uh, there is one one code of ethics for for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. One 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 overriding code yeah. of ethics. Yes. Okay. And. <coughs> Uh, yeah, there was a comment, Mel. I understand. Sorry, these are a little bit out of time sync. Melvin says, mm -hmm. so it was like they were being deputized. That, that was a reference to the uh, the Templars and you know recruiting mm -hmm. you know ex mm -hmm. uh, people in the jail and all that to help swell the ranks and and be able to to fight. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So uh, Alan Hasna uh, pregunta: Buenas noches a todos. Podría contarnos si trabajan con algún tipo de espíritus y de qué origen son. Bueno, uh, si, si trabajamos con, con, con espíritus, uh, no, no trabajamos con espíritus. No trabajamos con espíritus. No. Uh, se dice que nosotros uh, en algunos Uh, grados trabajamos a, a un tipo de metafísica y un tipo de energía pero no trabajar con espíritus no 
Quizás ese es el enlaimen de la iluminación del ser. ¿Cómo se llama la persona que hizo la pregunta? Eh, eh, la persona se llama Alan. Alan. Asma. Alan. El espíritu que trabajamos es el espíritu personal. Es en el que tenemos que trabajar. En nuestro espíritu personal. Y en alguna cosa de los... Pues trabajamos los... Uh, los sefirot que son nuestros chakras y son uh, que en, eh, en la cábala es el, los sefirot ahí es en lo que trabajamos pero es, es lo, lo espiritual sí so, básicamente usted se enfoca mucho en, eh, mucha énfasis en el carácter de la persona en el ser interno la conducta y la evolución de ese espíritu claro en su tránsito material en la vida. Así es, así es, así es. Entonces, sí. son de los muchos este, secretos, misterios que, que hay que estar ahí para, para vivirlo. Yo te pudiera decir, pero no es lo mismo que vivirlo en logia. Exacto. Te podría de, de, de comentar de, de, de un toque de tambor, pero no es lo mismo que estar en el toque de tambor. Exacto, exacto. Es, son, son ejemplos. Exacto. Y eh, usted dijo una, un comentario muy importante. Usted dijo, en la masonería no es una religión ni, ni una sociedad secreta, es una forma de vivir. Así es. Way, como dice, a way of life. Yep. Sí, También, así es. Normalmente, para los practicantes de IFA, IFA es a way of life. O sea, no es más allá, transcende religión. Es a way of life. Es una forma sí. de vivir. Es una sí. forma de llevar. Por, ¿Por qué? Porque la ética, aunque está impresa dentro de los Odundifa, los 250 códex o Odundifa, se dice que al también desarrollar el Ori o el ser interno, o en el caso de eh, el Vodun, la énfasis también en el Yoto, el, el guía ancestral principal, que al desarrollar y trabajar con esas entidades son para cumplir una misión, un destino que trae cada persona. Y el destino mío no es el mismo que el suyo claro. ni el mismo de la otra persona. O sea, puede haber, puede haber o sea, eh, conceptos o principios en común, como tenemos en, en, el, en el otro Difa y Cafú, que representa los 16 mandamientos de IFA, sí. pero realmente lo que determina nuestras decisiones, en ciertos casos, es nuestra conducta, o muchas veces usted escuchará el término Iwa Pele, o sea, buen carácter, el carácter en equilibrio. Claro. O sea, hay una, y se dice que el babalao sin buen carácter, o sin buen Iwa Pele, no puede alcanzar el máximo de su destino. Así es. Entonces tenemos dos filosofías o dos sistemas. No hay que diferencia y eso quizás es lo que lleva a mi próxima pregunta. Sin, de nuevo, traicionar ningún secreto de logia. Eh, para Ifa, usted sabe que la divinación, el sistema de comunicación a través de Ikin, a través de Opele o Ecuele, en el caso de Oloricha, a través de Dilogu, es muy importante, o sea, es una comunicación con, el, con lo divino, con espíritus, con eh, orishas, con fuerzas de la naturaleza, con hasta el mismo ser creador. Esa estructura dado dentro del, del, del cuadro masónico, ¿existe alguna forma de divinación o, o forma de, por ejemplo, de buscar si hay una situación, vamos a un ejemplo, vamos a decir que hay una situación que la logia puede ser de la sociedad, de la comunidad, del país, esté enfrentando, o de un miembro, de un hermano masón. ¿Ustedes tienen alguna forma de recurrir a una forma de geomancia o sistema divinatorio para poder guiar la logia o guiar los individuos para poder orientarlo precisamente para mantener ese equilibrio, porque ese, ese equilibrio de la, del orillo del destino 
¿existe algo así dentro de la masonería? Claro que sí existe, sí existe. Mira, nosotros lo hemos, la masonería, los líderes masones, estamos en la historia. Uh -huh. ¿Qué, ¿De qué, qué, qué puestos han jugado? ¿Qué, ¿Qué se ha aportado a la humanidad, a la formación de estados, a la formación de países? Uh -huh. pues ¿Sí? Entonces, ¿qué sucede? Dentro de esto te voy a comentar los que comentamos que tenemos grado 30, 31, 33, ¿cuáles son los rituales más importantes de los 33 grados? Okay. El primero, el segundo y el cuarto. De todos, ¿eh? De todos. Hombre, conócete a ti mismo. Uh -huh. Conócete a ti mismo. Una vez de que tú te conozcas y sepas quién eres y de lo que eres capaz, uh -huh. todo lo puedes hacer. Material y espiritual. Uh -huh. Si realmente te conoces. ¿Qué sucede? El primer grado es, viene y estamos naciendo algo nuevo, empezamos a, empieza nuestro viaje hacia la luz. Venimos de la oscuridad. Nuestro segundo grado es eh, más extenso sobre nuestros sentidos, sobre lo que somos, y ahí. Uh -huh. El tercer grado es importante en la alegoría. El cuarto grado es el cuarto del maestro secreto. Empieza el estudio de tu conciencia. De ahí, si tú no entiendes tu conciencia, pues no puedes seguir para adelante, no vas a entender a los demás. Okay. Entonces, ¿qué sucede? Están dando las bases y viene lo demás. Uh -huh. es, innumer es innumerable el número de libros que vienen porque están escritos, la que nunca falta es la Biblia, que es el, es el, es el, el mejor libro que se ha escrito. Uh -huh. A mi modo de pensar, mi opinión. ¿Por uh -huh. qué? Porque muchas religiones lo llevan y todos se encuentran su verdad ahí. Uh -huh. Sin contraponerse unos contra otros. Uh -huh. Ahora sí yo te puedo, eh, yo te puedo comentar un, 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 una ocasión que a mí se me dio la tarea de, estábamos, fuimos a, a bendecir un templo, que íbamos a empezar a, a, a trabajar en él, un nuevo templo. Uh -huh. Y a mí se me dio la tarea de arrojar los demonios de ahí. Ok. Jean Jerome, y los demonios salieron. Okay. Y los demonios salieron. Pero en ese caso... Mis hermanos en ese, lo sintieron cuando salieron. Y en, ese, en esa situación, ¿usted em, emplea su fe o su entrenamiento católico o su entrenamiento masónico? Yo estuve ahí con el gran arquitecto del universo. Ok. O sea, ¿qué... ¿Quién soy yo? Soy una amalgama de varias cosas, de práctica. O sea, tú cuando eres babalao, me imagino que tienes no, no, no solo las enseñanzas que te dieron, las herramientas, sino las que te ha dado la vida. Así es. Y fa es, es estudio y vivencia. Y aparte de, aparte de eso, yeah. de quién eres hijo, y aparte cuáles son tus habilidades y tus aptitudes, ¿correcto? H. Entonces, eso fue lo que yo poquito que aprendí de mi hermano, ahora recuerdo, este, de la santería. Entonces, tú en una pelea callejera, tú no sabes si muerdes, si arañas, si arrascas de todo, pero tú saliste triunfante. <risa> así, así. Yeah. Si eres boxeador, si eres luchador, si eres karateca, si eres yechú, no sé, pero tú vas a una pelea. Exacto. ¿Sí? Exacto. Con tu santo por delante, con 
el gran arquitecto del universo por delante con Mahoma por delante con Alá, con Yahvé, o sea, pero tú vas, tú, tienes que creer en ti. Ok. Eso es lo espiritual, eso uh -huh. es lo que yo siempre comento, ponerlo a la práctica. Muy bien. Yo le digo a mi esposa, yo tengo una relación muy grande con el gran arquitecto del universo, con Dios, muy uh -huh. grande, uh -huh. muy grande donde no cabe mi papá, no cabe mi mamá, no cabe mi esposa, no caben mis hijos, no cabe nadie en esa relación que tengo con el gran creador. Uh -huh. Es una relación muy personal. Y en esa fe, entonces es llevarlo a la práctica, eso es eso espiritismo, eso, eso de los, o sea, eso lo espiritual, perdón. Okay. Que mucha gente a veces... Uh, nos confundimos lo espiritual con el espiritismo. Muy interesante, muy interesante. Sí. So, so I, I, I asked, I'll, I'll try to paraphrase because we went very deep in there. Um, What so was I the asked, question? Sorry, the, the question yeah, yeah, by yeah. The, the gentleman so, and how it led to, to your paraphrasing now. Well, I, I added another question to that. Um, In the first question from Alan Hasna was, uh, good evening to everyone. Can you tell us if there, if you work with or if there are any spirits you work with within uh, Freemasonry and what are their origins? And uh, uh, Javier indicated that spirits or working with spirits as such, no. But working and knowing yourself and knowing your higher self and having that connection with a grand architect. Right and having that that deep understanding and knowledge, and then that my follow up question was uh, regarding uh, divination. In other words, I, I right. explained that the ifa, divination is a very critical component in terms of directing mm -hmm. and uh, you know a situation or and to which mm -hmm. again uh, Javier pointed to again the best the best way to know a little bit of the past, present, and future is to start knowing yourself. And building mm -hmm. that connection with the, with the grand with the grand architect, um, and he cited an example of when he was asked or charged to uh, bless a a new site for a temple, and mm -hmm. he used the term there were demons there in that place, and during that ceremony, he blessed it and in a sense exercise them or remove them right. from the place. And he says that his fellow Masons that were there, you know, felt the energies being released and, and set free from that place in order to consecrate. And he says the main, you know, pillar is, says like a person in a street fight, if you're got to fight, you're going to fight with every tool you have. But the first thing is you got to know yourself what you can and can't do. And you have to trust in, in the spirits or in what you've learned and who you are and in the grand architect that you're going to be able to make manifest whatever it is you're trying to, to accomplish. In this case, you know, uh, blessing a site and ex expulsing right. darker energies and everything else. He also made the, the very important, I just want to highlight that, that as you go from, you know, into the masonry, the idea is you're coming from darkness and the you know, the first uh, apprenticeship uh, uh, stage when you're sort of then the fellowship to the math is really a progression of enlightenment and having greater light and being able to have an open, an, a greater opening of your mind to who you are, your role or relationship with the universe and also with the grand architect. Again, Javier, have I properly... Uh, translated or interpreted what, what you said in Spanish. Okay. I have a question to that. Um, so given what you just said, how did you know that there were bad spirits there? Was it something that you innately have a gift within yourself to be able to say that there were bad spirits or evil spirits there? Can, can you tell, tell me that? Teresa, we are sons of God. 
right? We are sons, sons of God. I'm a son of God. I'm light. And if I practice something, I'm gonna achieve, I'm gonna master that what, what I'm what I'm what I'm interested to. Okay. And mm -hmm. I, I'm working on that and energy before to get into Freemasonry. So it's, uh, it's practice. What I said before, our fight against in, you know, ignorance is mm -hmm. you have to practice and practice to master whatever you want to master. Right. So for your for your question, that, that, to become that that kind of uh, to to do an exorcism, I have to know. And my master in that day, in that day, they know that I can I was able to that 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 duty that that with they they that core that they uh, that they were uh, the, evil spirits. The action, yeah, that they wanted me to to do. Because they but know. who sensed who sensed that they were there? Was it just you or other members that no, no, sensed no. it? No, no, no. It's a new temple. It's a new temple. You have okay. to you have to bring uh, it's not because it was something, no. It is oh. it's a integration. How you call it, Jean Jerome? La consagración de un templo. The the consecration of a temple. Yes. Okay. All right, so the blessing or the consecration of the temple before. Okay, I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a blessing. They, 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 they didn't call me because there is a demons in there. No. Okay. No, but, no, he but, went to do right. a consecration of the demo, but when he was consecrated, they they felt yeah. a, 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 a dark presence, like a, mm -hmm. a, a, a an evil there. Okay, yeah. and that was an intuitive gift that. Uh, people felt oh yeah they feel it when it goes out yeah okay yeah i i, I take some uh metaphysical uh, courses classes oh, okay <laughs> all right yeah okay so that's how you could you could tell okay. now I'm, right. I'm a reiki master oh okay <laughs> that too oh all right wow <laughs> And, and I do some theta healing too. Okay. Yeah. Now okay. I, I I was corrected by Beth. I was mispronouncing your name. Forgive me. Heavy oh. Javier, Javier, right? Javier. Okay. Yeah. I was saying Xavier, so it's Javier. Okay, Javier. forgive me. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> My autocorrect. <laughs> we have a question now. Uh Melvin Seaborn, who is the grand architect? Uh, we call God the great architect of the universe. That's, and that's, why would you call yeah. him that as opposed to saying God? Yeah, because yeah, because I mean, it's uh, uh, instead of they call it Allah, uh, Yahweh, Mahoma, and uh, Jesus, Dios, God. That's the great architect of the universe, a supreme being. Oh, okay, all right. It's easier to say that rather than individual. Yes. Okay, got it. Yes. All right, got it. Okay. Now, one question we talked about, um, and I think because we're at, we're at the two hour mark, so I just want to yes, uh, yes, and I'm, I want to read a comment from Danielle, but just before I yeah. read Danielle's comment. Uh, so again, the Grand Lodge, first Grand Lodge, 1717. Um, now, the English. I, I, when we spoke in private, my, some of my own research and, and, and so forth, I'm sure, there's talk about uh, 2,650 before Common Era, uh, the architect, priest, vizier, or vizier uh, Imhotep having formed an association of builders, but also uh, builders that had were, were vested not just in the physical building or as you, and, and they use the term, uh, as you say, operative, operative 
masonry. Yes. Um, uh, two thousand six hundred fifty before Common Era. Um, the question is, what happened between, let's say, the uh, third millennium BC, uh, before Common Era and seventeen seventeen? So in between that, you have the, mm -hmm. the Temple of Solomon, because you seem to have a reference point of Temple of Solomon. Temple of right. Solomon, I believe, was approximately. 900 uh, before Common Era. Before Common Era, yeah. Before Common Era. So you have a couple of gaps. You have 2,650 right. before Common Era to 900 and so. So about, well, about two, almost 2,000 years or 1,000 and a half years. years. Yeah. And then you have from 900 BC to Common to 1717, you have almost, you know, another, another almost another 2,000. There seem to be almost like like two gaps uh, without again, what happens in between yeah w without betraying any of the yeah. uh, you know secrets and all that is there a record or is there in your have you maintained or preserved ancient texts that talk about those periods in between in other words how how in seventeen seventeen did the Grand Lodge reconstitute that body of knowledge, principles, um, and and so forth, almost 2,000 years after the, king, the, the Temple of Solomon and the builders and the masons of the Temple of Solomon, the journeymen, and, and, and in, by the same token, back to Emotep at 2,650. I hope I've made that, didn't make that too complicated. Like, so in no, other words, what you're saying is, what was the pivotal um, uh, well, not thing pivotal. that... What happened? No, we're, we're, no, that's not what I'm asking. Say, what right. are the gaps? Right. What what accounts for that? What, what happened in those gaps of time? And do they have right. either written any written record, any historical record, archaeological record no. that basically none okay. of that? No, there is none of that. Remember, we are talking about the Irish right, the right of York, as we know. Freemasonry from the 1700 to up now. Okay. Right. So before okay. that, we have where we, how we are uh, portraying how we take uh, King Solomon's temple to to do the lodge, and uh, well, for that information, I mean, we are following these tons of information that we have from 1700 to now. And for that uh, history, for that that used to be before, uh, I, I don't have an answer for that. I don't have an answer for that because it's, it, it, it make it looks like a, if they have a gap, if they are the same, I'm not sure if they are the same, the same uh, Freemasons. Okay. Interesting. Because I, I have read books that it says that Pythagoras, Pythagoras, yeah, uh, they have a uh, the way they uh, he used to to have a, uh, the first degree for the apprentices and the initiation, and it was I mean interesting, but it's not. We took some from from their initiation to to the new, but it doesn't say that what they were Freemasons. Understood. There is an interesting book of uh, mm -hmm. Jesus in the temple of Tebas in Egypt. And we say, in, in the, 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 the writer, he says how Jesus Christ, how Jesus would go uh, into uh, initiation and he goes to the first and second and third degree. And what's the book called? Jesus in the temple of? In the temple of the Tebas. Tebas. Jesus Christ. Tebas. Templo de Tebas. Te uh, Tebas, T -E -V -A -S. T-E-V-A-S. Tia Thomas, e -E B-Boy, A-Apple, uh -huh. S. Tebas. That's a book? Yep. Interesting. I've never heard of that book. Temple of Tebas. Uh, and they're keeping it there because I can't even Google it. I'm not finding it in Google. <laughs> I'll have to research that one. I'll leave that. I'll leave yeah, a book. There is a lot of, 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 of books that they, they are uh, they call in, in occultism. 
I mean, and but like mm-hmm. I say, I, I mean, I cannot, I cannot answer that because when I was trying to, when we were trying to get into the Masons and the Templars mm-hmm. and now it's in this new era, there is a lot of gaps in there. No gaps. I mean, that is no way to explain it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yes. Because the Templars, they disappear with Jack de Molay in the 1300s, and they appear in the Chapel of Rosaline uh, 200 years after that. Right. And they appear and disappear, I mean, but no. I think the most important uh, here is the, the, for the message, what are we doing about it? Right. How that helps to 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 everybody, to myself in my life. Mm-hmm. Right. What I'm doing with my with all that uh, 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 tools. Okay. okay. I, I I would I would have thought that the Freemasons would have kept um, impeccable um, records. His yeah records and history of what had transpired as Masons, as Freemasons. Why? Just because they are so seeped in antiquity and sort and of uh, formed a lot of uh, what? And because they were bankers? Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, no. No, but they are seeped in antiquity and, and sort of yeah. form the basis of a lot of mystery religions, as I've previously said. So I would have yeah. thought that there would have been no. more record keeping. No, because, I mean, uh, remember, it's made by humans. Right. Mm-hmm. It's made by humans. And I think everybody has something in their own personal agenda. I understand. Okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, Okay. Teresa, Teresa yeah. myself, Javier Martinez. Yes. I told you, and I'll tell you one more time. Okay. When I go to the lodge, I don't go to for my brothers. I go for myself. Okay. Is there nothing that I that I'm saying in, in a bad way? No. To to mm-hmm. to put myself and to work in there and learn and then to come and practice outside mm-hmm. okay? to be okay. a better father father a better brother mm-hmm. that's where my right. my work really is right so okay. it's not going to get that into a file a file doesn't mean nothing for me it's my actions okay Okay, questions now from... It doesn't mean yeah. anything for me. I thank my brothers. Yeah. And then the regalia, and the medals, and the blah, 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 blah. No. Then why have them? It's a regalia. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, if they give you that, they honor you with that, thank you. But can you... Like I said in the in 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 the concepts in the of uh, of of the of the Mason, if somebody comes to me and start talking the sweet things to me, it, it maybe corrupt my ego. Right. Okay. Okay. See. Right. So, for these people, these persons who are watching the show. The main thing is to be yourself and what you're gonna do for the for the humans, for your family. For no humanity in no in files. I'm look, I I have the honor to manage Jaime Maussan for 20 years. He's a very well personality in, in, in the UFO community and worldwide. And then he says to me, Javier, what kind of a legacy we are leaving be- be- behind us? And I know 
I hear a lot of people that is asking for this. Uh, is somebody outside and it's gonna come and then universe and blah, 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 and this and this and their own life, they don't have, have a, a, a nice way of life in, here on earth, in his community, in his house. But he's, these people is worried about what's gonna happen in 100 years from now, and then blah, 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 blah. And for me, it's running from reality for, for, for today. Duty, duties, common mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, I understand. I understand, I understand what you, yeah. Danielle has a, a three questions. I've been sort of queuing them up. Daniel Barreiro, ¿vos conoces a Foggy, uh, Javier? ¿Usted lo conoce? Él está en Uruguay. Oh, yes. ¿Vos conoces a Foggy? Claro que sí. Él, él, ha estado, él ha tenido el gusto de estar en el programa de Misterios Ocultos con May, Mayra también. Eh, Bolú Boye, y buenas noches a todos. Si se cree en el ser o espíritu interno, entonces es similar a nuestra creencia con el Yotó. Claro. Evolucionar a partir de ese ser interno. Claro. Can you translate that into English before you, you continue yeah. that yeah. In, in Spanish explanation so that we can, you know, yeah. maintain our, our, our uh, continuity? Yeah. So, Bolubo Ye, good evening to everybody. Uh, if you believe, or if Masonry believes in the uh, spirit, the internal spirit, and then it's very similar to the belief in the Joto, uh, which is to evolve based on that inner self or that inner spirit of course yes yes okay and then en la masonería se cree en dios con sus diferentes nombres se, se descarta anu como dios de los anunnaki so in masonry so you believe in God with different names, or you you employ different name or respect or acknowledge different names of 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 the supreme or the grand architect. But do you discard or discount Anu as the god of the Anunnakis? Es la creencia de cada persona. Recuerdas es el es es un ejemplo como como la creencia que tienes tú. En tu yeah. religión, se yeah. respeta esa creencia. Ajá. ¿Verdad? Ya. Yeah. Exacto. Así es. Ajá. Pero eh, yo creo que parte de lo que él pregunta en realidad es lo que él, 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 él lo puso de esa forma. Pero eh, dentro de la masonería, de nuevo, eh, sí. ustedes utilizan eh, simbol la simbología, es muy importante dentro, aparte de la conducta, el ser interno. Pero usted pone mucho valor o, o pone mucho eh, enseñanza a través de símbolos para como referen referentes. Entonces, eh, usted utiliza, por ejemplo, mucha referencia al templo de Salomón. Usted sí. utiliza también mucha eh, iconografía eh, egipcia en muchas cosas que he visto. Pero por lo mismo, usted dentro de la analogía existe iconografía de Mesopotamia o de eh, los uh, personas de Sumer, de Babilonia, de Acadia, o sea, de toda esa región, eh, en especialmente la creencia en los dioses eh, sumerio y babilonio, o sea, los Anunnaki. ¿Existe ese tipo de iconografía o referencia dentro de sus récords o dentro de su simbología? Es que es la, simbolo la simbología es universal. O sea, no necesariamente que sea exclusiva masónica. Ok. Sí. Entonces, no es que sea exclusiva el, el, la G. ¿Qué significa uh -huh. para ti la G? El, el símbolo de, de Dios o el gran arquitecto, o sea, una abreviación. No es esa. Ok. Es geometría. Geometría, ok. Geometría. Okay. Eso es lo que es. La geometría sagrada. Geometría. Geometría, ok. No es Dios, no es God. Okay. Es geometría. Ajá. Ok. Entonces, ¿qué okay. sucede? Uh -huh. ¿Qué sucede? 
que estamos hablando de la masonería, quizá la G para otras cosas es otra cosa. Uh -huh. Entonces, es entrar a, a, a una fraternidad y, y entenderla, es, es, o sea, aprenderla y entenderla, ¿correcto? Entiendo, entiendo. Para después ahí hacer una sugerencia. Exacto. Si yo vengo a, 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 a Ebony o vengo a, 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 a la santería, pues no voy a venir pidiendo que me digan esto. No, voy a, vengo con humildad, vengo a, a, a aprender. Exacto. Lo que ya está hecho. Ya. Yeah. Ya cuando vengo y aprendo y estoy y me... Pues, quizás pueda sugerirlo, quizás no, pero me, me den luz el por qué sí y por qué no. Entiendo. El, yo tengo que respetar, venir y aprender. Porque es que vengo. Como aprendiz. Yeah. Claro. Exacto. Y sobre todo con una actitud humilde, humilde y, y real. Exacto. Pragmática. Sí. Ok. So, ¿y there, Teresa? <laughs> Teresa. I'm going to translate. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. So, so again, um, Daniel talked about if there are any, you know, references to the, the, the god of the Anunnaki is called Anu. Right, right. And uh, okay. specifically, and I, and I sort of embellished on that saying, uh, you know, for instance, within your, the symbolism, and, and I said Freemasonry is very steeped in symbolism. Uh, you have, you know, a lot of references to the Temple of Solomon, Solomonic mm -hmm. references, mm -hmm. as well as Egyptian. Mm -hmm. uh, do, I asked, do you have any uh, equivalent um, sort of references to uh, the Anunnaki or to the Sumerian, mm -hmm. Babylonian, mm -hmm. Akkadian, mm -hmm. Phoenician type divinities. And so um, Javier brought it back to the, the fact that uh, the, the symbols within masonry are very universal. Um, they're not you know, necessarily tied to one religious belief or, or narrow view. And he says that When you join masonry, you have to be very humble and open to learn what's already there. And in so doing, to then be able to maybe draw your own conclusions, but at least to be humble enough to, to listen and to, be, to receive the knowledge that's been there for you know, centuries. Uh, and he used or cited the example of the G. He asked me, do you know what the G stands for? Right, right. In, in the thing. And I used there I said is it you know reference to God or the grand architect and he said no <laughs> geometry geometry right so G for geometry so he's talking about so I guess the, the, you know when we talk about cuando hablamos de el término en inglés spiritual archetypes in no place is that concept of spiritual archetypes more present or more more resounding than in Mason. Is that a fair comment? Yes. Okay. Okay, so they're dealing with archetypes as as opposed to actual spirits. So to no, speak. not so much spirits, but they're they're dealing with archetypes rather than singular or or isolated cultural religious expressions. They're looking at more universal sort of symbolism and mm -hmm. and and references and symbol that can mean many things to different people, right? But but it, but it has their own meaning within masonry, which the path or the journey, if we look at the idea of a journeyman of being a mason, mm -hmm. is to sort of uncover those those symbols and their meanings and their through in a practical, pragmatic way, both in the lodge and outside the lodge. Okay. Okay. Interesting. That, did, did I say that correctly? If I if I make a mistake <laughs> or if I misrepresent, please don't don't be shy. Just say you're all right. You miss you miss the whole thing. <laughs> okay, the last mm -hmm. question for tonight because we're at two hour twenty a minute. I don't want to abuse uh, Javier's time, and and uh, we're really happy he was on the show. In Spanish, yeah, again, I'm not saying that well. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no problems. I know you are, you aren't uh, Teresa. You're a trooper. You're a true soldier. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel says, ¿existen escuelas de la masonería que abarcan la creencia de Medio Oriente además del Kabbalah? 
Uh, no conozco yo, este, es que como es universal, no es, una, es mundial la masonería, no ¿Eh? sé de las escuelas de Egipto, las escuelas de, de aquellas partes del mundo que, que, que tengan en, en, sus, en sus grados filosóficos. ¿Sí? Y, oh, okay. en, porque es, es, es muy variado. Ya. Yeah. ¿Sí? So, uh, Daniel asked, in, are there schools uh, within masonry that take on or examine the belief systems of uh, the Middle East other than just the Kabbalah. And um, Javier has replied that, again, masonry is very universal, very you know, broad, very you mm -hmm. know, general in a sense. But, but he says that does not uh, take away the fact that certain you know, specific branches of, of masonry may have, in their philosophical levels, in their philosophical degrees, may mm -hmm. have, have teachings or documents or focuses on particular culture, let's say e Egyptian or something right, like that. Right, right. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, wrapping up, very deep session. I really enjoyed this. Yanifa Fakemi, thank you for joining thank us. You. Fascinating. Very uh, fascinating. Beth, thank this you. is a fascinating session. Absolutely, Beth. And Daniel says, Gracias, hermano Javier Martínez, por sus respuestas. Jean, la reformula mejor. <laughs> la reformuló mejor. Hablo de la Mesopotamia, donde nace la creencia de la, en la humanidad. En la Amazonía también tiene la creencia sobre astronomía y astrología como nació en Mesopotamia. Pues hay, no sé si diga que creció en, nació en Mesopotamia, pero es, tiene mucha astronomía y astrología. Eh, Dentro de Amazonía. Yeah. So, uh, so Daniel asked, uh, thank you, uh, brother Javier, yeah, Daniel. for your answers. Uh, Jean uh, re uh, reformulated them or reposed them better. Uh, I'm talking about Mesopotamia, where the beliefs of humanity sort of were born. And mm -hmm. he's asking, in masonry, uh, do you also incorporate teachings or knowledge about astronomy and astrology as it was born or as it was done in Mesopotamia? And to which uh, Javier said that, yes, uh, maybe it doesn't quite, you know, sort of confirm that the belief system is mm -hmm. origin from Mesopotamia, but that astrology and astronomy, there are a lot of texts and knowledge and information in masonry about both. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. And Melvin finally says, learn so much. You and me both, Melvin. <laughs> yeah. So, Javier, what's the best way for people to reach you, contact you, if they want to learn more about masonry mm -hmm. or if they would like to contact mm -hmm. you directly? What's the best way to reach you? Uh, me pueden encontrar en misteriosocultos.com. Okay, misteriosocultos.com, okay. Misteriosocultos.com y uh, Misterios Ocultos con Mayra Berenice en el Facebook. Okay, Misterios Ocultos con Mayra Berenice. You shared that once with me, right, John Jerome? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Misterios Ocultos. Okay. It's a regular in our program. <laughs> I've been it's on their what, program sorry? for I've been a regular on their program for five years or more. Five years, yes. Five years, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm uh, with Maida, yes, yes, yes. Maida, yeah. You are the mystery in the occult, are you, Jean Jerome? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm like I'm like City TV. I'm everywhere. <laughs> City. <laughs> All our Canadian friends will will understand that or. Well, we'll run, run, run. <laughs> City Paul, everywhere. Exactly. Thank, yeah. you, thank you, Jim, Jerome. Thank you, Javier. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, Javier, thank you ever so much for coming on board and 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 being thank here you. and answering so many of my questions as I had them all lined up. I thank you ever so much, very much, and I thank all thank our um, all our guests who tune in every week. Thank you so much again and enjoy your weekend. Everybody keep safe. It's the end of September. We're going in October, my favorite time of the year. It's fall. 
It's going to be Halloween and Thanksgiving. I mean, come on, October's got to be the best month, right? So anyway, with that, I just want to say um, thank you and take care. And uh, Jean-Jerome, any last yeah. words? Or don't we need something from Javier before yeah. he goes? Yeah, yeah. Two, two things. So Javier, uh, also, are there any events or any any uh, mm -hmm. causes, events, or anything that you'd like to mention, anything you have coming up in terms of Misterios Ocultos, any programming, any, you know, I know we're in the COVID times, but is there anything you'd like to announce or, or let people know is upcoming or something uh, for you? Uh, not really, just thank you guys and uh, thank you for having me and uh, just the, to the people that uh, the, the new way of life that we are living right now, uh, we want to go and uh, beyond that, okay? Mm -hmm. Think about yourself and think about your family. I think that, that the Ashe. people person that loves you, they need you, and they need you well. Ashe. Absolutely. So, Ashe. Love Ashe. And remember, remember that they used to say sky is the limit. Not anymore. Let's make cosmos, universe, our playground. Okay? Ashe. That's your saying for the night. Yes, that's, that's, for the night. that's yes, that's Javier. No take the universe and the two. cosmos our playground. Uh, Buru yeah. boy, very, very good, very apt, very apt, very apt for the show. A last comment: I would be remiss to not recognize one of our two most uh, loyal um, viewers, furry viewers, uh, furry viewers, four-legged viewer. One of which is recovering from surgery. Um, so he's, Poor you know, I had a first show his sister, um, and, uh, you know, very, very loyal viewers are furry four legged <laughs> watching our show <laughs> and watching the compass, the, the compass of the square right there. <laughs> and, uh, our little, uh, <laughs> surgery, oh. our little about surgery, he's, you know, braving there. Oh. He's listening. Uh, to the show, uh, so, Mojo and and Titi Laye, um, thank you for watching. <laughs> our, our, those have become our show mascots. And Javier, thank you very much. Thank Blessing you, and thank uh, you. good night, everybody. Be safe. COVID's still around, yes. so don't take any unnecessary chances. No. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Muchas gracias a todos los que televidentes que nos han escuchado esta noche. Un saludo a toda la familia hispana en California y en todos Estados Unidos y en México y en Sudamérica que nos escuchan y gracias por uh, estar con nosotros en este programa muy interesante y muy importante con Javier Martínez grado 33 Mazón y Javier muchísimas gracias y muchas bendiciones gracias, gracias Teresa y gracias a todos okay. a, gracias. A los, gracias. buenas noches everybody buenas noches gracias